Hi everyone, it's Darius, and in this video we're going to be going over KiCad's PCB Footprint Editor. So let's go ahead and get started. Now, there's two things you can do in this editor, I want to say. One is load in a built-in footprint and make your own modifications to it so it can suit your needs. And the second is, of course, create a footprint from scratch. So we're going to start by loading in a footprint from a library. Now you'll notice again uh, that the icons are a little bit uh, cryptic or and, and that they all pretty much look the same except for the little symbols that are above them. Uh, in this case we want the one is a chip with six pins and a down arrow. I, I'm not complaining again about uh, KiCad's UI because uh, the silly thing works well enough for companies to make circuit boards with them. So it is what it is. Um, maybe it's something people can work on in the future. I hope they smooth out some of KiCad's. It's, it's a very, if you've ever heard the expression, configuration over convention, meaning that the user has a lot of options and a lot of power, but at the same time it means to get everything to go together, the user has to configure a lot of things. And that can make the first time user experience seem very complex. So anyway, the first field that is highlighted here is the name. And so we could go ahead and start typing in the name of a footprint we want to load. But here's the thing, if you're new to KiCad, um, or even if you have used it a bunch of times, you probably don't know the names of the parts by heart. So if you go way down here, at the bottom of the box, there's a select by browser. And now you can click on each of the libraries and see the individual components inside and find something that you want to modify. In my case, I'm just going to go with a surface mount LED. And so you may want to go ahead and start making modifications to your part, but you'll notice the save button is grayed out. And that's because we don't have an active library and this part came from the built-in footprints. It's not like one of ours. We want to, that's not what we want. We want to save this as a local library, perhaps in our own project or in a place where all the projects can access. But we certainly do not want to modify the standard and built in components. So, similar to what we did in the schematic and uh, the component editor, we need to make a copy uh, or not. Yeah, make a copy of this footprint and save it in a new library. The path base is the project folder, and I'm just going to call it LEDs. Let's go. My home folder. There's the LEDs that pretty, and there's the keycad underscore mod. By convention, keycad appends this dot pretty to any folder that contains footprint modules. So we have our copied module, and we're, but we're not ready to save this yet because, again, like the component editor, KiCad is not aware of the file that it just created. Configuration over convention, we have to do more specifying and options. So we need to go to the footprint libraries manager. There's a bunch of libraries in here. These are everything that's loaded but we're going to add more. We have to add ours. Append with wizard is what we'll do and tell it to look for files on my computer. 
and we have a browser interface, but look where it started. It's way in the KiCad installation folder, which is nowhere near where I want to go. I've located my leds.pretty folder and just selected it. Now, in my opinion, I think that the library wizard should start, um, should initially display your project folder instead of the, where the built-in libraries are. Anyway, you just want to select that. It informs you that it loaded it. And you can either add it to uh, or make it available to all of your projects or to only one. This is a trivial case, I suppose. It's just an LED. It's in our project specific libraries tab. So you should know it doesn't matter which tab you're on whenever you click append with wizard because it asks you at the end whether you want to go global or project specific. So at this point, it should be in the list of libraries. It should be loaded in there. So there is LEDs. I want to let you know that the Footprint Libraries Wizard is available as a menu option directly. And again, this is one of those things about KiCad where there's usually two or maybe three ways to do the same thing, get to the same place. Um, so it seems like there's a lot of options, but sometimes <laughs> several options are the same. So you can either click here, and you get the idea. And now, finally, that we set our active library, we can save this guy. Whoa, I rotated it, okay. Now that we have gone through the process of importing making your own local copy, modifying, saving a um, you know a standard or a built-in footprint. Let's make one from scratch. So click on click on the chip with six pins and no additional icons on it. And that's the new footprint button and I'm fine with the current footprint being lost because I saved it um, and that last thing I did was just rotating it on accident and also honestly I didn't make a useful modification it's just an LED <laughs> for our custom footprint I'm gonna go back to that ESP8266 that we made the schematic symbol for Alright, so now would be a good time to locate any sort of data sheet or physical dimensions of your chip or your board or your component, whatever you're drawing. In this case, I see that it's 14.3 and 24.8 millimeters. There's a few approaches you could do um, to draw your board. I will probably draw the board outline and then go and add the pins and I can set my grid onto something really small like a 0.1 millimeter and use the readout down at the bottom of the screen the X and Y coordinates to know you know click on 0 click on 14.3 in the X quick click on 24.8 in the Y but I'll have to zoom in really far so I can see that smaller grid and get exactly where I want and that would work I've done I've done it like that before but what I think makes it a lot easier is to utilize the user grid option 
Why is that? Because we can specify the user grid size quite easily and the X and Y dimensions don't have to be the same. So what if in the X, I want my line spaced every 14.3 millimeters and the Y, I want it spaced every 24.8. And look at that, I have my board drawn for me almost. I just have to click on the line tool and in no time at all, I have my board outline drawn. Now we can start adding pins, but I can't put my cursor where the pins go because the grid's so big. So I'm going to go back to my user grid. But I also need to figure out where the first pin is going to be. They're 2.54 millimeters spaced from each other but they're kind of in the center of the board and I'm, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of math to figure out where to put this block of eight within the 14.3 and it turns out it should be exactly 3.34 millimeters in from the side and then there will be 3.34 also on this side and then this looks like it's right on the edge of the board so because of that, my user grid size is going to be 3.34 in the X and 2.54 in the Y. I'm going to go ahead and drop my first pin in. And I'm putting it here instead of here because this is pin 1 according to the drawing. I can always go back and change the pin numbers. But since KiCad automatically starts numbering, might as well, if you can, do it right the first time. So now I need to go 2.54 millimeters over and put down 4. So I need to change my user grid again or there is a built-in one for 2.54 but you see we have a problem because even though the spacing is correct it doesn't start from the first pad the origin is in the wrong place it's down here so what we need to do is reset the origin to that pad but we need to be able to put our cursor directly on the pad so I'm gonna go back to my user grid I can put my cursor on the pad hit the S button to adjust the grid origin but now I have to click where I want the origin okay so I hit S and you might have to double click I, I think it it did it so you hit the S button where you want it and then click okay alright so the origin set when we head back to 2.54 millimeter, the place where the grid starts is changed. I'm going to finish out my pads. So at this point, I'm done with it. It was a very simple footprint. I have some silk screen going around the border, and the only other thing is a few through hole pads. You can hit the E button to edit the pad. You might have to hit escape first. There's the pad number. You can always go surface mount. Change the dimensions. But in my case, I'm not going to make any of these changes. Local clearance and settings. 
these are overrides for clearances. If you just leave them as zero, it will use the, the predefined values. So it's time to save this thing. And again, you can expect a little bit of uh, a little bit of trouble here because we're on the LEDs library. We need to go ahead and create a new library. And then again, once you create the library, go to the wizard. Find that folder that Keycat just created. Load it in. I'm selecting global this time because I might actually use this ESP board in other projects. One more step. Select the active library. And finally, save. Nice. Not as simple as uh, just control S, but it the complexity comes in because you're working with lots of different libraries, which honestly is something that is useful and can bite you at the same time. So, so you might hear me complain from time to time about KiCad's complexity or all the icons looking the same or various other things. Um, but the truth is, I did not pay a cent to get this software, and it works. And it works well enough for companies like SparkFun and others to make their boards uh, high quality. And for me, I can also you know, make a board and send it to a fab house, and I'm playing around with the option of maybe making it myself on a little CNC router or something. So you get the idea, the silly thing works, and that I can't complain about. And you know, every PCB design software has its quirks, um, but I really like that this one is open source and I can expect that you know it's, it's community driven and there's new versions coming out. And even though development can seem slow at times because you don't have paid developers, it it works so i hope that you have found this video useful and were able to follow along and i hope that you did follow along and um are starting to get the process of making footprints under your under your tool belt if you did have any questions please post them in the comments i'm sure you're aware that KiCad has some documentation available, quick reference, uh, for each of its different, I don't know, programs like PCB New. There's another reference that I wanted to share with you guys. I mentioned that SparkFun was using KiCad. SparkFun KiCad. SparkFun used to use Eagle, as I understand, and then when Eagle was bought by Autodesk, they switched to KiCad, and they went through and shared a lot of their um, tips and tricks, what they learned, and put together a little tutorial that's a good resource to run through as well. Alright, well that's all I've got for this video. Thank you for watching. See you next time.